John, you've been to the Titanic, yeah, right? Yeah. So we've got the Titanic and the Trias. Here's the Titanic. Can we pause here? So do you want to tell us a little bit about your dive and where you went? Well, we actually, uh, I don't know, can I step back to this thing? Yeah. We, uh, be because the, uh, we made so many dives on the Titanic, we always come down right about here and then we go over to the bow. That's the money shot that everybody's seen of the uh, very uh, front part of the ship, the anchor, and things of that sort. And then you just kind of proceed along here and explore the decks. You can look through the, there's a cabin window right here. You can actually see uh, Captain Smith's bathtub. It's still there. And, uh, and work your way back here. This is the boat deck. The officer's quarters were along here, and then we get to where the ship was broken. And this is like a giant pinata, because when she sank, she broke in two. And I think you've probably seen Jim Cameron's program, a more recent one, about how it came apart. But basically, if you, this part of the ship was all the galleys, the wine cellars, and all of that. So it broke in two, as I say, like a pinata. So you've got this huge um, uh, debris field in here. And you can just sort of drive around there and see all of this stuff from the inside of the ship. And this is about 500 meters back to the stern section. And uh, that's pretty well broken up. We used to be able to go under this counter of the stern here and see the three propellers. She had three propellers and one rudder. But that has fallen down because the ship's coming apart. It's being devoured by basically microbes, uh, the rusticles we talk about. And uh, they're basically eating the ship. And, just over the uh, about 12 years that I've been involved with uh, uh, dives there, uh, it's the sh size of the ship and everything's diminished a lot. It's not going to be there another 50 years. It'll just be a pile of rust. Well, thank you for sharing that. that my wife, really my wife nice fixes stuff. things that are somewhat that tasty. Uh, her pancakes are a lot like we, you know, the rusticles. They love those pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, most of us will never get to go to the Titanic because only two subs right now can go there, right? The mirror. Well, the, the two Russian mirror subs, yeah. Mm -hmm. This uh, April of this year is the centennial, hundred years since the ship sank. Well, it's a very good thing that we have it uh, in Google Earth and in the uh, Liquid Galaxy, so that people can view it and participate and get an experience of it from anywhere. And then, what other model can we go to the Trieste? that we put in there for Don is a model of the Trieste, and we're hoping, Don, you can tell us a little bit sure. about your experience actually going there, since I think only one other person uh, alive has been there, James Cameron, right. uh, in his his vehicle this year. Yeah. Don was with him when he went there, and this is the model. Go ahead, Don. This is the uh, Bathyscaphe Trieste, and all it is is an underwater balloon. This is the balloon park here. Okay. It's shaped because it has to be towed on the surface of the ocean. It was filled with uh, 54,000 gallons of aviation gasoline. And then this is a cabin suspended beneath the balloon for the two-person crew. And the word bathoscap, it comes from two Greek words, meaning bathy, bathos, deep, scapos, boat, deep boat. And uh, it was built in 1953. It was retired in 1963. Wow. Right after the uh, it, it, its last mission, it was owned by the U.S. Navy from uh, 1958 till 1963, and when it was retired, and its last mission was to investigate the lost uh, nuclear submarine Thresher mm. off of Boston, 8,000 feet, and then it was brought back to San Diego where its home base was and uh, retired. And then the Navy built two more Bathyscaphe Trias, Roman numeral two. And uh, they served until 1984. So what was it like when you went down to the deepest part of the ocean in the Trias? Was it dark? And After cold? about 500 feet, it was pitch black. So we were in, it was a nine hour dive. So we were sort of like sitting in a dark closet for nine hours. <laughs> and did you hear, didn't you hear some kind of explosion? Yeah, we had a window break uh, at about 31,000 feet. But it wasn't a pressure boundary. It was just a piece of acrylic that had been uh, squeezed, and it was a metal frame, and it uh, cracked in that frame. And did that make you nervous at all? Or? No, because uh, at that depth, where the pressure is five tons per square inch, 
had there been a you know, real failure, the sub would have been dead instantly. So in fact, we could look at each other and wonder what was that. And everything was with all the instruments and things said we were doing the right thing. We just continued the dive. <laughs> how many portholes did you have on the Trias? So we have a question here. How many portholes did you have um, on the on the axle submersible that you could view through? Well, there's one view port right here. Okay. And it's uh, seven inches thick acrylic plastic, and uh, that was it. Now and it fits, your, uh, it fits your face in there perfectly. What? And it fits just your face, right? It's small. Very small. On the inside was just enough uh, room for one eyeball. Oh, wow. And Jim wow. Cameron's sub, uh, which... You know, 26 March of this year, mm -hmm. he repeated this dive. Uh, he has just one viewport, but the in interface was quite a bit bigger. I'd say maybe three or four inches across, so you could use both eyes. Wow, that's incredible. And you were in the, and you had to climb down inside. Remember, you asked about the window that broke. That was right here. And that, because you could look out through the hatch, there's a small part of the hatch to see behind you. And it was not a primary viewing part, that was this one. But you, there's a ladder inside here that you can climb down. And then the hatch for the cabin was right here. So during the dive, this was just free flooding. So when that window broke, it didn't, no danger. We just didn't know at the time. You know, honestly, from my perspective, I don't know about the rest of you, but if uh, if I heard a loud crash when I was deep underwater, I would definitely be nervous. So you're a much braver man than me. Only my laundry man knew. Stirred up bottom sediment. Sorry, can you guys repeat that? Because it was a little hard to hear that. What did, what did he see? Did he see somewhere? Yeah, he had good vision uh, when he got down there. His the design of his cell was a bit different, so he didn't stir at the bottom much. Well, thank you so much for sharing your fantastic yeah. voyages in our oceans with us, and we really appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to making more models to new places where uh, Dawn goes next. That's really great.